This is In Layman's Terms, brought to you by Layman Library. Why, hello there. Clark Waters again. Why, Terrence has urged me to remind you to check the online programming now available from the lovely Layman. Today's episode will focus on a little story from back when the world was still normal and you could go places, even for in-person library programs at the library. While the online ones are great, Terrence said he was feeling nostalgic and wanted me to tell a story from the good old days. But first, a quick side note. After last week's recording was posted, I began attending couples counseling with my darling wife. We were able to reach the agreement that she would stop feeding me mail if I would stop being such a dark, which the therapist assured me was a medical term. Who knows? Next week, she might even let me grow my eyebrows back. Terrence felt more bitter than Brussels sprouts filled with espresso and covered in an avalanche of sauerkraut. He didn't like the way bingo had turned out the previous week. The only one pack of toiletries and a water bottle were useful, but he had eyes on a beautiful flower pot. Terrence didn't even notice that it was made of plastic and not solid gold. When it caught his eye, he not only saw the flower pot itself, but himself as the star of a particularly mellow sequel to Little Shop of Horrors where he grows Audrey Three, who survives on smiles and polite compliments rather than human blood. Terrence, however, was last in line to pick out his prize because he had distracted himself taking an obligatory bingo selfie. As he stepped closer to his future as totally Terrence, enough sweat ran down his eager face to fill the pot in which his eyes were glued. Right when he was certain it would be his, the lady in front of him bought it with her tickets. He was sure she smelled musk emanating from his person like a thousand jet planes and knew he wanted it. The thief, as Terrence put it, turned back to talk to him about Penelope's oboe lessons. Terrence was certain she noticed that he was making flower pot contact instead of eye contact. Out of his peripheral vision, he saw her smile that some would describe as friendly but he knew her true motivation was that of a schoolyard bully who just snatched the lunch money right out of a chubby little hand. To everyone else in the room, the thief's laugh when she talked to the bingo lady was nothing more than a polite chuckle. Both her and Terrence knew it was maniacal, like she had just assassinated Ronald McDonald himself. But Terrence reminded himself that past was past. He was totally new Terrence. And the flower pot he bought at Planetopia was perfectly capable of growing a respectable tulip. He was back at Lehman for a crafting program. He was going to have a great time with the group. They would be making dog and cat sculptures out of plastic cups, glue, paint, and various household items. Never wanting to come unprepared, Terrence made a test model at home. Now that I think of it, he corrected himself, saying that he had made two new test models because the first one melted. He was able to mold its gooey remains into a sculpture of Angela Davis, who Terrence greatly admires. Terrence sat down next to two ladies who insisted on giving him all the library gossip, which Terrence wants absolutely no part of. Apparently, someone put a large print book in the standard print section by mistake. While he found that to be deeply scandalous, Terrence wasn't there to stick his nose in anyone's business, even if it made a scream want to escape his mouth like waking up to your wife shaving your forehead because you've lost your eyebrow privileges. Can you relate to that? He spent the whole hour making the perfect German Shepherd, just like the one his family had when he was a kid. At one point, he even took out a magnifying glass to make sure no glue molecules had dripped themselves into places where they didn't belong. When he was sure he was finished, Terrence showed his sculpture to the lady who was running the program. She said his use of glitter was refreshing 
it made her feel nostalgic for when people only used glitter when it was at its most necessary, like during the great glitter shortage of 1991. Terrence then pointed out his highly efficient adhesive distribution, and tears of joy streamed down her face. She said, Thank you, Terrence. Thank you, you beautiful man. That was definitely what she said. I swear to Voltron, he said. Terrence then reminded her that his teeth are white and sparkly as well. She said, Sensodyne will sponsor you one day. Terrence felt that he had left enough of an impression for one day and left the library, beaming with joy. When I interviewed Terrence for this article on Zoom, I asked him why his dog was dressed as a drag queen. While it looked fabulous, I wondered if that was humane. Terrence picked up the German Shepherd and brought it closer. It was the sculpture Terrence had made that fateful day in the craft program when he initially gave me the in-depth version of the blog post he wrote about, I thought he was exaggerating. Now I can see that he is an expert crafter. Now that I'm done recording this, I'm going to get out my magic marker and draw on some eyebrows so I don't scare people at the grocery store. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned next week for another episode of In Layman's Terms.